Hey, what's up, Scott Balkan here with Imagination Creation Films, and today we're talking about anamorphic lenses, specifically the Vazen RF anamorphics. Perfect for the red Komodo. Why the long face? <gasps> You've got a knee squeeze. So if you're wondering why there's a slight difference in the background, and well, maybe even from me, from the intro, or even the color of my shirt, it's because of the timing of this video. I had planned on releasing this video sooner with some other project footage, but there sadly, um, yeah, timing did not line up. So I figured I'll just release what I can in the review with the footage that I have and can release. And uh, you know, we'll just get the review out. It's, you know, it's been long enough. So yeah, subscribe. Now first, some housekeeping. Faison did send these lenses to me, three of them. Uh, for review, but they have absolutely no say in the review or get to see the video beforehand uh, and uh, Lenses have already been sent back, which is why I don't have them here in front of me. So as usual you can expect an honest and fair review So what they sent me for review were three lenses the vase in 28 millimeter t2.2 with amber flare the 40 millimeter t2 with the blue flare and the 65 millimeter t2 with the blue flare So I could experience it, you know a little bit of everything so first a little bit about each of these lenses and then we'll kind of dig into the review and my thoughts and you can see footage and you know, maybe a joke. I don't, I, I don't know. You just, you just don't know how these things go. So all these lenses have a 1.8 times anamorphic squeeze. So it's not quite 2X and well, it's much more than 1.33, 1.5 or 1.6. They're all available in either blue or amber flare and are available in an RF or a micro four thirds mount only. The 28 millimeter is a tiny T2.2 to T16 lens with a close focus of well, a little over two and a half feet. It has a 300 degree focus rotation and about 90 degrees for the iris. It has a 77 millimeter millimeter. You like how I say that? Millimeter. It makes me sound ostentatious. Um, it's a 77 millimeter filter thread and an 80 millimeter front diameter. Now, I said it's little. It is. It's about 4.2 inches long and, well, it weighs just over one and a half pounds. The 40 millimeter is not so tiny. It's a T2.0, T2, point, oh, T2 uh, to T16 lens with a close focus of uh, also just over two and a half feet. It has the same shared 300 degree focus rotation and about 90 degrees for the iris as well. It has no filter threads on the front, but it does have an external diameter of 95 millimeters like so many other lenses of its size. So mounting a matte box is well, pretty straightforward. It's almost seven inches long, which is considerably longer than the 28, but it also has a huge front element and well, a couple of elements, making this lens weigh in at just under four pounds. That's two and a half pounds more than the 28, and the large elements on the front make for a very heavy front load. So support those lenses, folks, and support those filmmakers you love so much. Join the membership below for extra fun. The 65 millimeter is an even bigger lens with a T2 to T16 aperture and a close focus of a little over three and a half feet. It has the same 300 degree focus rotation and about 90 degrees for the iris. It does have filter threads on the front at 86 millimeters and the outside diameter is 95 millimeters as well. It's almost seven and a half inches long and it weighs 3.7 pounds. And although it weighs less than the 40, it feels heavier because well, the weight is sticking out a little bit further from the camera. They all have 0.8 mod 32 pitch gears and Imperial focus scales. And just a note, I was shooting all these examples and well, actually the other stuff too, on the Red Komodo for these tests in both three to two and four by three formats. Because well, hello, Komodo, raw, global shutter, awesome. And it has support for the 1.8 times D-Squeeze built right in. The 4.3 or four by three format will give you the correct 2.4 to one aspect ratio and the three by two format will give you a slightly squashed and wider 2.7 to one, which I tend to like. It makes all the people look fat like me, but also shorter. So maybe not like me. You know, maybe I need to find other ways to, I need to get out more. So now let's go through each of them. 
And well, do you want to start with my favorite lens or my least favorite first? Did you just answer out loud? You know, I can't hear you, right? <laughs> just kidding, I can. Uh, okay, you win. We'll do my favorite first. And that lens is the 65 millimeter. This lens is a lot of fun to shoot with. It makes a really nice anamorphic image with a lot of the anamorphic characteristics that we all love. And well, if you don't love it, what's wrong with you? You need therapy. Uh, you do get a little breathing on focus, but honestly, almost every single anamorphic lens does this, some more than others. It covers both three x two and four x three formats on Komodo. And well, there's tons of flaring and an incredible amount, if not more than necessary light streaks. And well, I'm a sucker for blue flares, um, but I'd say these are kind of like getting a bag of cookies and sitting there eating the whole thing, not feeling guilty at all about all the levels of streaks. You're gonna have an upset tummy, but I didn't hate the amount. It just, you know, more than I would have expected or really desired, but those cookies sure tasted good for a little while. Now, it definitely has that beautiful oval bokeh that we, well, really love from Anamorphics. And the distortion is really pretty. Well, anamorphically pretty, I guess is, is the right way to say that. And it just looks great, if not just a little busy. The 65 millimeter focal length on a 1.8 squeeze is, well, it's a really nice lens for almost anything, but really the ultra wides. And keep in mind, the field of view on the 1.8 of a 65 is like a 36 millimeter spherical lens. So it's pretty wide for a telephoto. And now let's move down a notch this week as we go from my list from favorite to not so favorite on America's top three Vazen lens review. I'm Casey Kasem. Now my next lens is the 40 millimeter. Uh, Y'all may not know who Casey Kasem is. He used, he used like, American top 40. Yeah. Uh, this is the heaviest lens of the group. And well, it's a nice shooting lens. Everything looks nice on this lens. Very similar in performance to the 65 and the look, the flare, the bokeh, the streaks, etc. For me, on the 1.8 times anamorphic, 40 is pretty wide. You're dealing with a 22 millimeter wide spherical equivalent field of view. And in three by two, well, it'll start to vignette just a little, but it's completely clear on the normal four by three. Now the 40 has a bit more breathing than the 65 and the breathing is width wise, perpendicular to the squeeze this way. You'll understand why I bring that up in a moment. But as you can see, it performs very similar and I'll just shut up and let you watch the rest of these clips without really me babbling on and on about the speech machine that was left on accidentally overnight while you're trying to get those four hours of premium sleep before the 5 a.m. call time. Oh, oh, uh, sorry, too late. Uh, the clips are done, yeah. I guess I kind of blew that one for you. Sorry, let me sleep tomorrow. So let's go to the last one and by far, my least favorite one. And if I had to give the 65 millimeter a rating out of 10, it would probably be about a 7.5. And I'd probably give the 40, maybe a seven. The 28 millimeter, however, I'm probably giving it a five, maybe a 5.5, but not anymore. Um, and there's several reasons why. First, the flare. This one has the orange flare, which, you know, I don't mind the color. It uh, can be quite enjoyable and I don't mind it at all, but it's the pattern. It's not a very pretty flaring pattern at all. I mean, it's kind of chaotic and ugly with flares mostly staying in one direction and then tons of little star flares that just kind of spread out. I, I don't know, it might just be me. Uh, if that's a look that you like, well, go for it. Uh, for me, it's just not. Um, I did ask a couple of my friends who had used it before uh, what they thought, and well, several of them liked the look. So judge for yourself and, you know, don't listen to me if you like it. I mean, it's a free world. Uh, another is how much the anamorphic squeeze changes on the 28 during a rack focus. Yeah, it's, it's different. It's more than the other two, and the 28 changes 
vertically, which is the squeeze. The 40 changes horizontally and the 65 changes horizontally, but it's very minimal for an anamorphic. The changing of anamorphic squeeze, well, it kind of feels a little unnerving for my eyeballs. I mean, you tell me, you're looking at it. Well, just a second ago, now you're looking at me, staring at you oddly. I mean, did, did you agree? It's, it, it doesn't feel right and it, it doesn't match. It doesn't, doesn't blend well with the other lenses and it doesn't blend in my eyeballs at all. Now, the other thing about the 28 is how wide it is. This is a freaking wide lens. I mean, it's basically a 15.5 millimeter spherical field of view on anamorphic. And well, this one, you can't use it in three by two, um, really at all, unless you just want to see the entire like lens hood in your shot. And uh, it does creep in there a little bit at four by three, but not quite so much. So keep that in mind. The 28 can be a little difficult to get sharp focus on just because there's, there's really so much going on. But if you work with it a little bit, you can get a pretty sharp image from it and you can control that flaring. It'll be a lot easier for you. So what are the pros and cons? Well, I'll lump them all together here and kind of single out as necessary. Pros. Uh, affordable, high quality lenses with a nice 1.8x squeeze. The flaring is very nice and strong with heavy busy blue or amber streaks. Fast anamorphics as well with a T2 on the 40 and 65 and a T22 on the 28. That's a T2.2, but you know. Uh, what are the cons? The squeeze breathing. I don't like that word. Squeeze breathing. Squeeze breathing on the 28, it's not awesome. Uh, it sucks. I don't like it. The star-shaped streaks on the 28 are not appealing. It's, it's more of a sun ray more than a star, but it's just not appealing. The 40 and the 65 are, well, very front heavy and will require a lot of support. Uh, if you, you know, you take your two pound lightweight Komodo and then you add a four pound lens on it and it's gonna turn it into a heavy rig. Now, that can be beneficial, but it's also gonna be very heavy in the front. Um, the overall smoothness of the focus rotation, um, again, it's smooth, but it's not very creamy. Um, and I don't think I mentioned it before, but it's, it, it, it's a little rough when you rotate, but it's not, it doesn't stick. It just, it doesn't have a lot of fluid in there, so it doesn't feel really kind of creamy. But it's not the end of the world. So that's it. That's my full take on these. I've used them well, for several projects and over many months. And well, I really like them for well, a specific look and it needs to be a busy look that, that you're going for. I did not use the 28 uh, as much as well. I just didn't like it. I did use it some, um, but I didn't like it that much. Um, and if you were looking for a nice set, well, the 40 and the 65, well, it'd be a great combo in well, either orange or blue streaks, in my opinion. Um, 28, and you tell me, I might be completely off my rocker here. Uh, my rocking chair, because I'm an old gamer. Um, what do you think of them? Do you, do you agree or disagree with my assessment? I'm always interested in your opinion of them because, well, it helps keep me grounded on my opinion. You know, let me know in the comments down below what you think and what you think of my think because that's the way it goes, I think. And, well, as always, as I like to leave it, don't let your passions center around your life. Let your life center around your passions. Mm -hmm.